Hi everyone, happy Halloween. I was almost at Halloween Eve, but it is Halloween. This video series came at the request of Crystal Douglas, who I love and adore, and she is my seamstress that I use here. She was asking me when the last time I did a video was, and I don't remember. And then she also was asking me a few questions that I think everyone is a little confused about when it comes to dressing for winter and it comes to dressing for your body type for the winter. How can I still, you know, express my style when it is two degrees outside? And I'm going to do these videos called the sweater series. So it's going to be talking about how to style certain sweaters, how to dress in layers, how to look cool, but also have it be functional, all the above. So today we're going to talk about layers, which is one of my favorite topics when it comes to fashion. I also would be either in my front room doing this or in my studio. I didn't go to my office today, but I'm hiding from trick-or-treaters because we weren't prepared for them. Didn't think we were going to have them. Also, most people are still at work, so we're having all these kids ring the doorbell. So let's get right into it. Layers are the most amazing way to create the most proportionate body shape. I think that they are really kind of intimidating to a lot of people that don't know what they're doing when it comes to that and they just think I'm just gonna put on a bunch of things. When I was in New York in January, I noticed that for the fashion capital of the country, not a lot of fashionable people in the winter time. And for me, I feel more confident when I am expressing myself through my style. So I wanna first talk about the ideal body shape when it comes to proportion, not body type, not anything else. But if you want to create a look that is, it's, it's weird. Like in the way that we're trained to read left to right, our bodies are designed to look at things in a certain way that is proportionate. So you could be a size 16, but if you're dressed in a way where you look proportionate, it's not really going to affect people. I was a size 16 and I used to dress myself all the time in a way that would balance everything out. For women, what does that mean? So when you start a sketch, when you are a fashion designer, I don't consider myself one, um, but I've dabbled here and there. It starts out with the body type for a woman being a triangle on top of a triangle, so flipped on top of each other. And if you really want to kind of figure out how you can dress yourself in a way that is proportionate, think of yourself as two triangles. Even if you're not two triangles, because, spoiler alert, most of us aren't, I'm not we can still aim for that, and that way it won't read as something completely off to the human eye. So what I like to do is I actually like to do lighter layers. I like to start with potentially a t-shirt or potentially a thin blouse and then add to it. This is really good for when you're traveling as well. So if you don't wanna add a ton of bulk, but you also wanna be able to have options, which I love options. You start smaller. So you start with a blouse that's a cotton base. You start with a blouse, that's maybe a, a rayon base. We don't recommend a polyester base because you're gonna be sweating, but you start small. And then maybe from there, you add a cardigan. I usually add a blazer or some form of structure so it gives me the look that I'm going for. And then I put a coat on top of it. If that's something that might feel a little too lightweight for where you live, then you can take the t-shirt or the blouse and then layer it with a thinner cardigan or a thinner pullover or a thinner v-neck sweater and then go from there. This is also something that I'm seeing a ton of on the runway right now that I'm really hoping kind of comes back and that's the car coat. So back in the day, people didn't have heating and air conditioning in their car and also the car would get kind of dirty. So what they did was they had their normal coat and they had their car coat, which was this kind of oversized, big, warm thing. It was almost like a car Snuggie and they took it off and then left it in the car. I am a big fan of that as well. I have my car coats where I take it off before I enter somewhere because I want to look polished and clean and you know have all the right lines that I'm going for. There's another way of looking at this too. If you wanna go a little warmer, but you also don't, let's say I have a few girls that hate to wear pants. The outfit I have on right now is actually a perfect alternative for those who hate pants. Um, I don't recommend wearing a sheer uh, blouse underneath it, but you know, whatever. So I'm actually wearing a dress right now. It's a rayon stretch dress. You've seen me wear it a million times. And instead of just going with the sleeveless look, I put a blouse underneath it. For a non-Halloween or a non-evening event, I would obviously recommend doing a more subdued blouse. So I would do something that is once again a cotton blend 
or something that has maybe a pussy, blow, pussy bow added to it, maybe something that has some interest because it is a deep V, and then we'll add a jacket on top of that. If you, and then also I'm wearing tights that have fleece in them, so they're warm, but I'm not sacrificing style for warmth. Another thing I want to talk about is the bulky sweater. I know it's a big thing. I know everybody wants the bulky sweater because it's warm and it's cozy, and I love them too. But here's a way to style them in a way where you don't look like you are just the Michelin man. Because, and this, once again, guys, this is not about the size of your body. This is the proportion of your body. So if you want to wear this big chunky sweater, most people, what they think about doing is doing skinny jeans or legging and then a flat because they want to keep the bottom so tiny so as to not look large all around. And I understand the logic, but let's think back again to those two triangles, triangle on top, triangle on bottom. So if you're gonna do bulk on the top, let's say you're gonna do a big chunky turtleneck or a cowl neck. Instead of doing a skinny jean and a flat that's going to streamline every single thing, if you're a little bustier or if you're a little curvier on top, if you balance that out with a chunky ankle boot or a chunky oversized boot, then you've got chunky on the bottom, thin in the middle with maybe your legs or your skinny jeans, uh, your legs in some skinny jeans or some leggings, and then you have the bulk on top. So bulk on top, skinny in the middle, bulk on the bottom. It's the same thing with people that are like, I don't think I can wear bell bottoms because I'm curvy. If you're wider up top with the bust, we bring it in in the waist and then it flares out at the bottom. This applies to everything, not just the waist. So I want you guys to think about this when you are starting to layer because we're in this weird time period in to Nashville anyway, where it's like 75 today, it's gonna be 40 tomorrow, and I like to dress in layers, so if I start melting, I can take things off. So in that first outfit that I talked about, I could take the oversized coat off, and then I could potentially take the blazer off if I needed to. Tonight, it's gonna be 70, I'm going as is, it's all good, we're not doing really much of anything, but I felt like a little fortune teller moment happening here. I don't, this isn't a costume, I had all this stuff already. But I wanted to share that with you guys. I'm gonna be doing a series of these. I'm actually going to be demonstrating how to do these. I've been kind of off of creating content as far as video goes lately. I just haven't had the time, I haven't had the energy, and by the time I do find the time, I wanna nap or I wanna do my own laundry. Can you blame me? Have some really cool stuff coming up. I'm not allowed to post about it just yet. It'll be about another two weeks before I'm able to share photos of what I'm currently working on. And you guys, I'm kind of dying on the inside about it. It's gonna be great. But I will continue doing the sweater series. I'm gonna talk about different types of sweaters other than just the cowl neck and the turtleneck. I'm gonna talk about what to look for when you are purchasing those. And I'm also just gonna talk about dressing for winter in a way where you don't feel like you are a giant pile of marshmallows. Unless you wanna be, then that that's great. We'll get some Rice Krispies and we'll call it a day. We'll call you a snack. But that's all I have to say for today. Once again, to recap it, triangle, triangle. Let's balance everything out. Doesn't matter if you're 300 pounds or if you're 30 pounds underweight, there is still a way to find balance. There is still a way to dress your body in a way where you won't freeze to death. And there is a way to do it in a way where you are expressing yourself to the absolute fullest. I will talk to you very soon. For those of you who are celebrating Halloween tonight and trick or treating, I posted um, Bo's costume. It lasted about three seconds, but it's on my Instagram. I am as I'm myself tonight. <laughs> this is really sad that I had all this stuff in my closet, but you guys know me, I love a good black and gold moment. If you have any questions about what you want me to talk about on the sweater series or in general when it comes to winter style questions, it's gonna be a cold one coming up. Drop them down, drop them below, and I will try my best to answer everything. But there is your basics guide to layering. Small, thin layers, the more the better, and let's go and create that ideal shape the ideal balance of proportion, and I don't care if you're 300 pounds or 30 pounds underweight, we can still make you look great. I will talk to you guys soon. Happy Halloween. Bye.